what's up with all the traffic and 8000 TCP and we'll have a deeper look at it. Okay, Ganesh, you know, uh, you've been doing some analysis here, found some activity on port 8000 TCP, and I think some others have found that activity as well. So yeah, what's like, the deal? Yeah, there was actually increase in um, scanners, as we are seeing in the past few days. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of started on um, last Thursday around, I think, 614. Mm -hmm. uh, there were also some researchers from Let Lab they found, I think uh, they're saying it's related to Satori. So what we did is, you know, trying to look from our system, you know, from our uh, CBB backbone and see any, if we have any indicators related to that, maybe any additional indicators in addition to what they are talking about. So this graph is a little bit uh, busier, but I'll explain it a little bit. Uh, the graph here I'm showing is about 45 days here. Uh, I'm trying to show here at what point we have seen some increased traffic related to various Satori variants. Uh, the activity we are seeing here is around this time. Uh, this is on port 8000. Uh, in this case, what they're saying is that there's one specific uh, web server, mini web server exploit, which the Satori authors actually incorporated into their arsenal to actually, uh, that's what their theme is. They're trying to figure it out new exploit code and adding them to the existing ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, and typically it uses HTTP ports 80 and as well as 8000. Uh, but clearly it shows much of activity on 8000 TCP here. Uh, this is what actually we have seen with respect to 8000 TCP in the last 14 days. Uh, around this point, actually they're leveraging this uh, vulnerability. In, I think Xiong Mai, I think it's uh, one of the HTTP servers used most predominantly in Asia Pac region and they have specific version of 1.00, which is vulnerable. And uh, it has a CV number of CV 2018-188, which they are leveraging to actually scan, uh, scan the internet to find any devices with the, that the specific uh, flavor. Well, before you go on here, I guess, so, so they're, they're scanning this, uh, this Zongmai um, application is that is that a web server that's used in an embedded systems is, yeah it's yeah. used in iot devices like any like uh, but i think it's a mini web server kind of thing okay. which they have uh, okay. this vulnerability i think they know which w version has the vulnerability and they're specifically looking for that okay and there's specific products that are, have that incorporated yeah. that okay i think these seems to be on my research this seems to be more prevalent in asia pack i think that's mm -hmm. the reason we are seeing more there too mm -hmm. that kind of uh, explains the timeline why netlabs is seeing more compared to other parts of the world okay. um, and this is the same thing uh, showing us the volume increase with respect to the same scan sources increase mm -hmm. uh, just to show you to i mean show the increment we are seeing in this case it lasted for a couple of days, then kind of tapered off. But even though it's kind of tapered off, like the, the reason is that they found out another, actually they put another exploit code into their arsenal. In this case, it's specific to dealing that 2750B. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, actually, they're using it as a warmable capability, not mm -hmm. just a nice scannable. If they're finding, I think they're trying to propagate to additional devices which have this exploit code. Mm -hmm. um, I'll come back to, if you let me, to come back to the first slide. Actually here, when we see 45 days here, around this time, I think uh, 5 or 10, this is where we've seen a sharp increase in ports 80 and 8,000. Uh, these two are actually used by the Satori, Dasan, Jeepan um, routers. Around this time, there were two CV exploits codes were used that's been actual, actually utilized by the Satori. And actually, in the third slide, I talked about um, the D-Link exploit code. When I look back, actually, we have a spike around 525. They said there was exploit card and 525, mm -hmm. and we have that visibility. It's just for one hour. I think, um, if I remember correctly, there are two or three scanners. They did that uh, very fast scanning, and they then to dormant. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, they're leveraging with uh, 80 and 8,000 ports around this time. Right. While looking at actually um, from the reports, there seems to be one uh, C2 port. 
uh, which, which this is not a typical port we typically see on internet or any other ports. It's very low volume port. But when we are looking at it, there was very, very little spike here and there was one alert in our system too. And this one scanner from Asia Pack region. I think maybe some devices are trying to contact with the C2 via this port. Other than that, uh, we do not have uh, much correlation here, but we have seen a definite correlation with this C2 port. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we know what the objective of this botnet is? Uh, uh, this botnet is a typical, it's panned out of from uh, Mirai, like another mm -hmm. IoT botnet. Okay. Uh, the way they're doing is, I think uh, this is their fifth iteration of uh, Satori. And this, uh, at this point, actually, they have another capability. And you know, some of the Satoris doesn't have always this capability. They have vast number of uh, DDoS vectors. Like, for example, they can do UDP flooding, I think mm -hmm. uh, TCP SYN flood, as always. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are also heavily targeting uh, TCP ACK flooding, addition to, I think, a GRT flooding. Uh, that's what they have the capability. I, I think uh, at, that, at some point they may utilize those vectors uh, to DDoS. Mm -hmm. But there were some reports on the internet chatter. Uh, they at least uh, witnessed a couple of uh, DDoS vectors to one or two IPs. Mm -hmm. um, but th that's not substantial. But definitely they have that capability to provide DDoSs to mm -hmm. their victims. You know, it's interesting being the old guy at the table here. Um, there was a you know previous era of botnets that occurred that were based on predominantly Microsoft Windows platforms mm -hmm. prior to Windows instituting automatic updates. Okay. That activity got cleaned up and now we're in a second era of botnets that are targeting IoT devices of a ver variety and we already talked about the expanding repertoire of devices that are being targeted but on top of that the command and control mechanisms are also evolving to facilitate greater scale yeah. and more resiliency against takedown efforts. It's interesting though, you know, you mentioned that back in the day there was no auto update for Windows, and back then I think you could really get away with having one good vulnerability against Windows and you could build your botnet for forever. And it seems like things oh, have accelerated. Said, yeah. And even though we don't really have a great way of updating all these disparate IoT devices and their own vulnerabilities, be it you know something that's actually part of the device or like a, just a poorly configured password, um, we see more acceleration in the number of vulnerability these guys are willing to, mm -hmm. to bring out mm -hmm. in order to build their botnet. Like they can't get away with just one anymore. It seems yeah. like there's, there's more and more. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if that's indicative of us doing a better job as a community in securing things. It might suggest that it is, mm -hmm. but it might suggest that these guys are just more savvy than the last, uh, the last generation. Oh, well, I mean, it, it, they, they had the opportunity to learn from history, so th there have been uh, activities there. But, you know, I think it's uh, interesting you point out that whole update thing, because I think the real important thing going forward is, um, you know, I've been saying this actually for years, is that there really only is one security feature that you must have in any device, and it's the ability to fix it without human intervention. Mm -hmm. And it's especially important for IoT devices because the notion of IoT means you don't necessarily have a keyboard and a screen and a human sitting in front of it ever necessarily. And so to be able to do that without human intervention is the fundamental, most important capability. There will be flaws, there will be mistakes that will be found. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to fix it and push it out there without having to go and run out in the middle of a pipeline in the middle of who knows where in the woods mm -hmm. and actually fix a device. That's fair. I like okay. it. Good discussion. All right. Thanks, Ganesh. Thank you.